It's Happy Hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy Hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's NewOrleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you because that's New Orleans and this is Happy Hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common other than we're all new millennials in a bar today. We're at Wayfair on Ferret Street, which is a couple of blocks down from Napoleon Avenue on uh, the sort of what used to be the Killing Fields, which is now actually sort of a hip part of town. And not only does Wayfair have uh, the usual bar food and, uh, and uh, restaurant items and drinks, but they also have a three-hour happy hour here every day and a Friday brunch. Check that out for people who really have nothing to do. You're going to have brunch on Friday from <laughs> 11 till 2. And let me just tell you this. Happy Hour is brought to us today by Door Furniture for the last 80 years. 80 years. Door Furniture has been serving retail customers throughout the greater New Orleans area from its home base on Elysian Fields in the Maroney. They were in the Maroney long before it was groovy, I would imagine, as well as the finest furniture from brands like Stickley Century and Flex Steel. Doors designers can come to your house. Do you guys have a house? Uh, Blake Stanfill is here. Blake, you have a home with furniture in it? I have a home with furniture. How did you get the furniture? And three children. And three children? Yeah. Well, you're going to be needing more furniture before you know it. Yeah, so I have furniture with lots of stains. Okay, well, so someone from Door Furniture will come to your place and advise you on what to put in the place of the stuff you've got that's covered in stains for free. Wow. Did you know that? Did Riot know Mueller that. is here as well. <laughs> Riot, I know that's your real name, Riot, R-I-O-T. It's right. So I'm going to stick with that. Yeah. Riot Mueller, as in M-U-E-L-L-E-R. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. But even if it wasn't my real name and I said that was my name, you should just also stick with that, you know? What's the difference between like, those two? Like, like uh, well, you, you had to talk about it. You know. Well, I can't believe that someone called you Riot. Really? No. Yes, really. Well, we haven't talked much yet. Maybe at, I maybe can't believe anybody minutes. would call their child. Well, I would believe it's that. It's 2018. Actually. You don't well, think you anyone born in would 2018, call their child? No. <laughs> you weren't born. Their child, right? I yeah. think when you were born, probably people weren't calling each other Riot. This is a great segue, though, to talk yeah. about because my legal name is Rosanna, a name that I was never called one time in my life. No one my ever called you Rosanna. My mother has never called me Are Rosanna. Are you serious? I was called well, I Tori for for all of my life, which is. A section of my middle name, which is Vittoria, two T's, no C. Vittoria. The Italian spelling. So yes. right. It's like an acronym, then. So right. Thank is you. An, a scramble. It's an, yes. an, it's an yes. anagram. Yes, exactly. It's an anagram. Right is an yeah. anagram of But I always four. love it because everyone always wants to do the whole, like, Riot, that's not your real name. I'm like, bitch, the name, the name I was called my whole life isn't my real name. You know, like, <laughs> we're, beyond, we're beyond that whole thing. There are, there are no limits. Where did you, you know? grow up? Seattle, Washington, born and raised. Hmm. Yeah. And is that normal in Seattle, Washington, to call somebody something and then never to use their name? Or is it just your no, family? My, my family, yeah. My dad, uh, my dad's a crazy person, and he named me the wrong thing. He was, try- <laughs> he was trying to name me after my great-great-grandmother. And uh, like seven days after I was born... He called his mother, my grandmother, and they're talking about the new baby. They're all excited about it. And she was like, yeah, really interesting name, Rosanna, like random name. And he's like, what are you talking about? It's a family name. Like, I'm keeping a family name. And she's like, there's no one in our family <laughs> named That's Rosanna. That's pretty good. So, yeah. so there wasn't? No. I, I, the closest I thinking? have found is Rosalyn. I think there's someone mm, okay. in my family, Rosalyn. So, so it might be from that. sort of... Uh, crazy? Yeah, for mm. sure. For sure. I pray he's not you know, watching I'm this. sure he's my not da- listening. So my dad actually has a name that he's never been called as well. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, What's my, your dad? My, my dad's name is Kavoski. Uh-huh. Which is okay, a, how do you spell that? Yeah, it's K-A-V-O-S-K-I. K-A-V-O-S-K-I. It's a Polish name. Kavoski. So my, my grandfather served in uh, the Korean War, I believe, and he did his R&R in Poland, and he met a gentleman by the name of Kavoski, which is Almost uh, similar to Kevin in in mm-hmm. English, okay. and he told him he was going to name his son uh, Kavaski when he had a son, and that's what he did. My grad, my dad grew up in rural Tennessee, very rural uh, Tennessee, Hampshire, Tennessee, and no one knew how to pronounce his name so much so that my grandmother wrote his name on the wall, and when people would ask, "Hey, what's your baby's name?" she would just point, <laughs> and so she, his name is Skip. Everyone has always called him Skip. 
Um, so yeah, he too okay, has a name. Wild. Skip and Tory. Skip and Tory. Skip and Tory <laughs> turned Ryan. Well, Skip and Rosanna. No, it's Kavoski and Rosanna. Yeah, right? Ka- yeah. Kavoski and Rosanna. Because we're never going to remember this in sixty minutes. Right? The comedy styling's up. Yeah, so, thank so, you, <laughs> thank you. So the funniest thing about that story, though, well, apart from have, both having names that no one uses, is that your father met a, Pol- a random Polish guy. Was it? Your grandfather. Mm-hmm. Did mm-hmm. it end up being his best friend, this guy, or was it just some random dude he met in Poland at, like, I mean, in a bar like this? I'd argue that when you're serving in war and you're about to die, I feel like everyone's your best friend. Yeah. Right. Right. You can make best friends very easily right? Um, or quickly. And so, Did they uh, stay in touch, Mr. Kowalski and not to my Not to my knowledge. Uh, not to my knowledge that my grandfather and the gentleman that he met in Poland uh, stayed together. I, I don't think so. Mr. Kowalski sounds good. That's Mr. good. Kavosky when you put Kavosky. a Mr. Well, in front the, of it, that's a, like a but here's the thing, Bond you, movie or something. But so I, so I, I was in about, let's say, like the sixth grade or so when Carla ID became super popular. Uh-huh. And the song Pass the Kavasi was out at the time. <laughs> so whenever I called someone's home, um, I would get to school the next day, and it was middle schoolers who were... I walk in the room and be like, Pastor Kowalski, like all day, um, all day long. So, what a joy. What a joy. What, yeah, middle that's school. great. Yeah, totally. 12. That's like comedic gold in middle school <laughs> right there. Well, it you was are, great so you're a comedian, right? I am. Actually. Yes, I am. And that's oh, why you, you? Did you pick Riot because it's funny? Well, I, uh, I was given that name. My friends gave me that name, uh, and they started calling me that because I, I... It was a nickname jokes. in high school. Something. Yeah, well, it was a nickname for a, a gay summer camp that I work at. Camp 10 Trees, little plug in Seattle. Camp what? Ten trees. The Ten na- the, trees. The name comes so, from an archaic fact that uh, some Jewish lesbians who made the camp uh, came up with that one in ten people are gay. Is mm. that a fact? Which is, uh, one no. in ten. <laughs> That's not a fact. <laughs> that is not a fact. Actually, the fact is ten out of ten people are homosexuals. Uh, that's the real fact. <laughs> okay. On the scale. So, this is yeah. scale, right? On the scale, exactly. What's the name of the scale? Kinsey. The Kinsey scale, yeah, exactly. for sure. On the scale. So yeah. listen, right. if you're on the North Shore, Door Furniture's recently opened a second location in Covington. <laughs> door furniture is as New Orleans as it gets. I forgot to read that last little bit, but they won't mind. I love being, door furniture. I love that it. was the best I, transition I, worked over I think by I've them. seen yeah. in two yeah. years of being you on the show. Can't beat that. <laughs> that Thomas, was flawless. Thomas' two-year anniversary today of being on on Happy Hour. Love that running, man. Ha- running Happy Hour. Here's to forty it. more, Thomas really, Walsh. Exactly. Here's to forty more. <laughs> So there's a gay summer camp, and where is it? In Seattle, outside of Seattle. So yeah, how old did you, are your kids when you send them off to the gay summer camp? So there's one week that we call Families Week that uh, the youth are 7 to 18 years old because it was a, a group of, uh, of Jewish uh, lesbians who wanted to send their kids to camp, but at the time when it was created 16 years ago, they didn't feel comfortable as same-sex couples sending their kids to, like, a conventional camp because mm-hmm. many- there's a lot of parent involvement. you got to drop them off. Is Jewish lesbian a big combo, those two qualities? Is Jewish lesbian a big combo? Yeah, is it like common? I mean, sure, yeah. Like, like, Bacon and eggs. I mean, like, yeah, like <laughs> Catholic lesbian, I've never heard that one. I know. Well, it takes us longer. I'm a Catholic lesbian. I'm a reform. Uh, I'm a recovering Catholic lesbian. You're still a lesbian, but no longer a Catholic. But no longer a Catholic. But it's so hard as a recovering Catholic to say the words, I'm not a Catholic, but I suppose I'm Me not. Me too, so I'm in the same boat. Yeah, Lifelong you're recovering Catholic? Su- cafeteria Catholic right now. That's what I call myself. Do you do any? Anything Catholic at all? Like uh, I go to so church on Catholic Christmas shit. Day. I, I do no, no, so I, much I sent, I sent my kids to, to CCD. All right. You know, my, nice. you know, my mom was was on it, but my, my grandmother wanted to be a nun, but uh, she also wanted to have children, so she opted for children. So I grew up in a super Catholic uh, wow. family. Right. Uh, but yeah. I am reformed. Yeah. Uh, in, yeah. In, I'm in a, I'm a recovering Catholic. How I old wanted... were you both when you gave it up? I I gave it up in second grade, uh, oh, wow. men- mentally, but I stuck with it for a long time. I, and uh, second but grade when when you were like six or seven? Or when I no second grade, you're you're six in kindergarten. I was probably eight. Hey, so you decided mm-hmm. I'm no longer Catholic? Yeah, because I went to what? my teacher and asked her. I was like, I'm all ready. Let's start the training. Like I would I'm I would like my collar. I want my suits. <laughs> I I love talking. Uh, like I can give a great sixty minute speech every Sunday. No problem. My core values in line. Let's do this thing. 
And I went to her and was like, I want to be a priest. At eight years old. At eight years yeah. old. I'm like, okay. and they're always talking about it, you know. Yeah. In, calls in, to in the this, vocation. Calls yeah. to the vocation, yeah. you know, because they're going down these days, you know. So, uh, so I was like, let's do this, you know. There's not a lot of other people stepping up. I'll be a priest. And, uh, and she was like, oh, you can't be a priest. You aren't a man. And right in that moment, I was like, oh, this is all bullshit. Like, I have a good mm. spirit. I'm a good person. I would make a very good you priest. You would be an awesome priest. I would be an awesome priest. And if you are just saying I can't do that because of, of my your perception of my gender, then, like, fuck this. This isn't so real. So that was all it took. That was just it. Yeah. I mean, that was mm-hmm. the first thing to be like, oh, this is a lie. And then you're like, wait, you're talking about Christ-like things, but then, like, being assholes to women and mm. homosexuals, <laughs> like... That's a lie. So did you think about switching religions and becoming Jewish? Sometimes, yeah. I love Jewish people so much. Why don't you just do it? Uh, you could be a why Jewish Why don't lesbian. I switch to yeah. Judaism? Yeah. I'm, I licensed. Get, I go to, I'm licensed to convert her. C-Rock oh, damn. Ju- let's yeah. do this. Okay. How long does what it does take? What does it require? We have 45 take, yeah. minutes <laughs> here together. I, I now go to First Grace. Shout out to First Grace Methodist on, uh, on Canal and Jeff so Davis. So you've moved from Catholicism to Methodism. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that kind of so does. So you're on the way now. Yeah, I'm on the way to <laughs> becoming a Jewish lesbian. Yeah, okay. I think, you have to get, I think you have to leave Jesus behind Completely for Judaism. I would never leave Jesus behind. Well, then I don't what think a you great can, guy! I don't think you can switch over to. Well, see, or can you? I think Jewish people can like still Jesus, convert right? If, yeah, I yeah. Think well, Jesus so, was we're recovering Jewish. Catholic. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> what What's your relationship with with Jesus if you're going to convert to Judaism, Sirach? Can you hold mm-hmm. on to it in some? You can respect him, but I mean, you can't accept that he's son of God. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I that was I'm difference. about it's that. Like, I respect him. It's the difference between Do Jesus I'm... of Nazareth and Jesus Christ, right? Right. You I know... love Jesus, though. I love All right. Jesus. That's That's good. Good. You know That's what I was t-shirt. tripping out about Jesus the other day? I had like an epiphany from some book I was reading or something where Jesus, Jesus coming down, being a good dude, and then, uh, and then like dying on the cross. It wasn't to save us for our, from our sins. It was to show us that we are not our bodies. And I was like, whoa. You mm. thought of that or you I'm read that? that. I, re- I read that. I read it, and I wish I could remember what book I read. I mean, but they alluded to that, and it, it just clicked. It instantly clicked. I'm like, oh, yeah, because we are in our bodies. Yeah, but that hasn't really worked as a message. What do you that, mean? Well, that hasn't really gotten across. It that's hasn't come thought. across. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It, yeah. it hasn't come across. That's why, no, I'm, that's why I came to this podcast to, well, this is, uh, <laughs> this to is let some more people Blake know. comes in. Aren't you in the marketing business, Blake? Aren't you this like part of branding? what we do is, is marketing and branding, for well, sure. Couldn't you rebrand Judaism? I mean, uh, Christianity, so that we yeah. got the message that we're not really our bodies. That was what Jesus was trying to say. Hey, listen, that's been a work in progress now for about 2018 years or so. Yes. Um, yeah, I right. wish that I could say that I was smart enough to figure out how to rebrand it. <laughs> well, we've still got 40 minutes. Well, at least I, and we've got looks, our other guest who's not here, by the way. I think that's so what we're going to put this on. Time. Task. Yeah. I think that's a task for a new guest. <laughs> we need to find someone to sit in this chair because we have this woman who's... This it is, maybe what, is the chair for name? Elijah. Am Elijah. I right? <laughs> that's very Jewish. <laughs> Thank okay, you. so this woman... Jessica Franklin was coming here. If, she, if you're listening to this, Jessica, I don't know what happened to you, but... Jay see, Boo. Look how much information Jay I have. Jay Frank. <laughs> Listen how much information. Oh, look no. Nothing. No, I got no information. Oh, no. You know the only thing Jay I know, Frank. only thing I know about Jessica Franklin is a uh, Jesus converter and is working to dismantle Catholicism. What? One blank page <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> All I know about Jessica Franklin, and I'm not making this up, this is what Graham DuPont, our producer, told me, and th- <laughs> never sent wait. me any biographical information about her at all, <laughs> just told me she's a narcoleptic. <laughs> That's all she said. So, and so you I Googled, Googled her? Is that the first thing I that comes Googled, I Googled That's Jessica Franklin narcolepsy, and I found like she's written about five or six books on narcolepsy. Damn, wow. I wish she was here. Me That's too, crazy. but I guess she, the obvious, damn. she's falling asleep. Fun and, fact about Jesus, also ha- dealt narcolepsy. with narcolepsy. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's probably why she's not here, <laughs> right? No, but, but, but like, he Did also stayed up for like 40 days and 40 nights, though. That's so right. So he Jesus might have the cure. Up. No, that's the wrong religion. No, that is true. 40 days and 40 nights, was, wasn't that something to do with Moses? No, it was no. Jesus when he was in, being tempted by the devil. 
in the uh, oh. in the desert. He he stayed up. Jesus. Right? No, am I making that? Oh, maybe it is Moses. Now so. that we're saying it, maybe it is Moses. To do with Can we get a quick Google? Is yeah, anyone got Google, Google stuff? stuff? Yeah, the Forever. temptations. Can we do forty days, in the forty desert. nights? No, it's forty years. Moses wandered around the for, desert for forty, for 40 years. years. Yeah. Well, How long did Jesus stay in the desert? Forty days. Yeah. Nice. All right. Good yeah. job, my <laughs> man. Very nice. That's right. What, what was he doing in the desert? Um, he was. It was like fasting or something like that. I, I can't remember the story. My oh, grandmother's okay, frowning upon Meditating, well, probably being a good Sarah, person. No. 40 days and 40 nights is Lent. Ah, yes. Lent. Oh, yeah. so between what and what? Between, between what, Mardi what Gras it? and <laughs> Easter, yeah. What, Ash Wednesday. Is, Ash Wednesday and Easter. What happens? Was that the crucifixion? That's the whole no, that's stations the risen, of the cross. Yeah, so, yeah, that's so, the whole stations of the cross the right there. of the there. cross was the crucifixion. That's the 12 stations of the cross. That's where it's on our way to, yeah, to being crucified. Yeah. That didn't take 40 days. No, yeah, no that took like three that, days. It was a very short one. Before yeah, that, he, like, was, he was kissing up on Mary Magdalene and just trying to, uh, you this know. This is trying really to be, embarrassing. Nobody knows. You have to know this if you went to... You know, and I taught CCD as well. CCD, what, what Ooh, is that? We got exactly? an what is what is what is, CC, is I don't know because I went to Catholic school, so I didn't have to go. So I went but to it's public school, but yeah. it's like Catholic Day School okay, or CCD. something. CCD. So it's called, it's, it's for the Catholic, Catholic, Catholic kids who who don't, don't go, go to, to Catholic school. school. So like, it's their Sunday school. Oh, it's Sunday bonus, school. Bonus so you taught Sunday, Sunday school. school. Mm-hmm. You taught CCD, and you don't know what Jesus was doing in the desert for forty days and forty nights. I do not. I don't know. I thought he was also resurrected and hung out for like 40 days. No, that's three days. No. It's Man, like I hope my half. pastor is not watching this right <laughs> now. This is just embarrassing at this well, point. Well, if you had gone to seminary <laughs> school, you would I know. You would know Thank you. That was, that was a very validating you know thing to nice? say. Thank you. It would be you. nice to have some of those clothes. I like that. I know. Where that's, would you get that? I know. That collar, the yeah, whole like look. look. I'm here for it. Definitely. So, right, you were, you were done with it and were like, you weren't going to take none as... That's no. A second, second. Look trip. at the role of nun. Prize. Look at what a nun does, and yeah, I yeah. love the nuns. I love every single nun I met. I love nuns. I was taught by nuns. I worked for nuns for a long time at Providence Hospitality House. Well, what Shout do they out do? To that. What do they do? That service. Sucks? They serve. But, but they dedicate the, their life to service. But the, yeah. thi- so you don't the get thing to that sucks about nuns. When is a nun talking ever? Right. When have right. you ever heard a nun well, talking so ever? I'll, as a counter, just as a counter, my middle okay, school was founded up? by nuns. Um, and also the high school that my mother and sister went to. And so, like, there are different orders of nuns that take more prominence in different communities. Right. So the Sisters of the Holy Family, which is a order of Catholic, black Catholic nuns, um, which is... That's another yeah, good that's one, awesome. like the Jewish lesbians, that's black awesome. Catholic yeah. nuns. That yeah, it's black Catholic nuns. Pretty and so, select group. Yeah, it's a very... The Sisters of the Holy Family are very uh, select group. That would be a good group. soccer match, actually. That's awesome. The, the black Catholic nuns and the Jewish lesbians. That'd be interesting. My money's on the Jewish lesbians. You I think? don't know. You've never seen whoa, Sister Jenny. Whoa, You've never seen whoa, Sister Jenny or, damn, or, 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 or Sister Innocente uh, move around. Sister who? Innocente. I would love Sister to. I'd, okay, I'd take oh, everything I said name. back. I'd love to be <laughs> with those nuns. But I'd just be of service to them as an yeah. ally, you know, because I can't be, I can't be I'd a, like to meet someone called Sister Innocente. Yeah. What well, no, you didn't. Name. Not not when you were. What did she look like? Well, she was. Not when you were little, huh? Yeah, not when you were little and talking during PE and you had to sit on your knees. With your book bags uh, on your on your shoulders um, during the entire PE class. You had to do what? Damn. You know, like eighth grade. We so it's sort of like punishment. Like we we were talking too loud. Abuse. Not child penance, abuse. Grand, not at all. No, that was just uh, Catholic growth. abuse. Just character Good building. Character, character building. building. Discipline. Character building. Well, it's totally worked on you because you're a nice guy and you've got Thank a regular you. job and a family. Thank you. With furniture and you with furniture. three, house with stains three on kids. It. That's and good. Stains. Three that's, kids. That's Catholicism yeah. working right there. <laughs> Procreation. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Now, what about your kids? Are they going to uh, they, CCD? They they, are. they were. They were. Um, but uh, uh, recently, I think there was a, a shift. Uh, in philosophy, in which we're oh. going to be trying some things at home, but up until last Shock year, treatment. Like Y'all got to come to First Grace. <laughs> it's so dope. Well, what is come the deal with First Grace? Grace? What is it? First Grace is amazing. First Grace came out of uh, after the storm. There was an all-white Methodist church, and there was an all-black uh, Methodist A-M-E. church. I'm gonna fi- I'm gonna mix them up. W- but one was called First Methodist, and one was called Grace Methodist. And after the storm, they couldn't come back as two separate entities, resource-wise, people-wise, all that type of thing. So they came together and created First Grace Methodist, and they're amazing. They have a ton, a ton of awesome programs. They're doing amazing work to uh, to fund lawyers to help people. 
uh, uh, to to stop them from being deported, mm. and oh, and wow. they've done some awesome sanctuary it? work. It's on First Grace. I mean, it's on a mm. Jeff Canal. Davis and Canal. Yeah, they got really good signs always. Amazing yeah, signs. I live right by there. Yeah, oh, like yeah. With the with the on sort the of stick on letters. Yeah, things. yeah. What do I say? Like, oh, it's across the street from um, was it Energy? No, what? Uh, yes, exactly. From Energy. I know exactly yeah. where it is. Yeah, yeah. Trusting God, have a snowball is a good sign <laughs> that they had. Okay. Uh, do you make those up? Do you write those? No, no. I wish I'll, I'll go for that. No, but there, I, I'm not. I'm not there yet. So, either. what makes it so good other than people getting along and? So being raised Catholic, which can be a kind of uh, oppressive faith to, to be raised in, there's just a lot of freedom. It's like very mixed race. It's like 50-50 black and white, which well, feels because good. because they both couldn't because afford to... Yeah, yeah, for resource-wise and people-wise. brought them together, didn't but, they? But a diversity of perspectives is just going to make any... Thing better, yeah, but is right? there a prayer or is it yeah, mostly yeah. just so a like fish a full... fry type situation? <laughs> no, it's like it's a church with a Sunday service. So and do you believe in God? Amazing then? programs, definitely. Okay, I definitely believe in God, higher power. So and... do you believe that God is helping you out? Are you praying to God? Oh yeah, God allowed me to be sitting in this chair right now All for right. sure. And yeah. what does God look like? What yeah, that's my question too. Like, yeah, yeah. What kind of form does? Yeah, it was a very, very, very personal question, (laughs) but but I'm down to go for it. But to me, God, what is my, I'll let him talk through me right now. What is, what does my God look like? Well, he sounds like it's a he right there already. Sure, but I don't, you know, gender, everyone's the same gender. He is she and she is he. We need to bring a balance to the feminine and masculine energies that live in, in all of us. So he, she, whatever, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't have, because I was raised with this white sky god. Yeah. Uh, I don't have I don't have the trigger of God with a capital G and it's a man. It's all good, you know, like well, that's that, why I'm asking you that what God you was think working god for me like. too. But the thing the tricky thing about verbalizing your higher power or your god to other people is spirit is spirit is something that's undescribable, mm. you know, and and my my feeble monkey mind isn't going to be able to transmute the pure white light that is God, who is just this positive being who loves me, who supports me, who wants good things to be happening for me and all, all the people around me in the world. Uh, it's, it's hard to verbalize that, you know, so... How do you explain someone if, when you believe like this, like there's a, there's a higher power and they're taking care of everything? And a higher power that's very personal to me, and I believe you have your own higher power that I would never be able to excri- describe okay. your guys' So mm-hmm. what I was going to say was, how, yeah. do you, how do you describe the role of that God in the life of someone who's not so fortunate? Well, I, someone who's homeless or... I haven't been fortunate well, my you, whole life, you, you know? look great. You've got nice Thank clothes you. on. You've got Thank a you. job. Yeah. You're, uh, you know, you're obviously we know, educated. We know, we know how it here, is. You've free you, booze. You can, you can look a certain way and still have a lot of trauma and, and but drama. But you have to go one block from sure. here and there's people who are in a very, very bad situation. Now, how do you explain God's role in that? Because life is sorrow. Well, Buddha said that, that life is sorrow, but there is, there is a, uh, there's a cure to that sorrow you know there is a way way to face that sorrow like it's it's like the basic thing like how are you going to appreciate the sunshine if it hasn't been raining before if it was sunny all the time i'm not going to want sun every single day i need i need some hard stuff to happen in my life so i can i can bump against the forces of of this world so it's god balancing stuff like that so he makes you happy and someone else has to be sad no, definitely not. So no. why can't and we, that's why I'm saying my higher power is personal. Fix it for all of us. To me, because why can't why God? There, why God is homeless, fixing, why fixing there, everything for what's us. What's the explanation though for people? I mean, there's got to be one. Why people get cancer? Why do no, I, why I do kids get hit cancer? It, hit it. See. So no. So I, 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 you, Blake. I think the I think the the fallacy I think in that question is that there is a reason. I think that there's a perfect randomness to to life that uh, is just that is the part of the design is that is random and so okay. there is no uh, balancing there's no ledger that says that when I get this award or achievement someone else has to be uh, belittled or or hurt in some way that, that's just not how it works it's all random but do you think God pulled the trigger and, the, and there's randomness now as a no that's no. more the white sky God you no, know what yeah, I, I mean don't, I, don't, like, I don't think there's some person who sits up in the sky who can count the number of hair on my head and, and that type of stuff like 
not at all. It's more so, at least for me, the uh, God or however you want to d- define it is more of an energy or the 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 realization that what binds like the human experience is the ability to find like happiness and love, like love in a true form. Um, and I think that you know even through the Bible and through Catholicism, they, you know we learn that God is love and that. You know, God is made up of a, you know, made it was made up of like the the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is the piece that I focus on the most because that's always been the most relatable to me. And that Spirit is something that can touch everyone. And it's also one of the piece that I touch on 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 the analogy that you that you gave is that there's studies that show that there are people who are quote unquote worse off than me. I you know, yeah, you know, went to Ivy League schools and you know, traveled the world and three children you know like I have a lot but there are, there are people you went to an Ivy League school uh, I went to Wharton for business school oh okay so but there are people who have much less than me who are much happier uh, than well there I. is that that's right yeah, just and, and because so, someone doesn't have a lot of possessions right. doesn't mean they're not happy right, right. And so true. I just so I just want to note that that's you know true. just because you know point. someone is achieving or something like that doesn't mean that that they have achieved enlightenment or or happiness right. or or love or understanding someone without all the resources in the world can achieve all those things um, and be much happier. So I just note that. All right. all. Yeah, man. Love okay. that. Okay, so listen. Love that. So what normally happens on the show is, we, first of all, you normally have three guests. <laughs> so this, well, the third at? guest is Jay Frank. falling asleep. Jay Frank is not here. And then that one the other thing that happens is that we have a music guest on the show who plays music. And about this point in the conversation, I say, hey, let's hear a song from... <coughs> Someone who's there. So today there's no music guest either, due to a strange, bizarre snafu <laughs> on the production side of the show. Unless, so, unless Jessica Franklin is a musician. So <laughs> what I thought I would have this brilliant idea, which I was going to discuss with you at the beginning of the show, but I guess we could just do it now. Here we go. Was when I got to this point, I thought, seeing you're a storyteller and a joke yeah. teller, right? Yeah. You're a comedian. And I sing, and a, I sing in choir at and first grade. And you sing grade. the choir. Yeah. Perfect. Always sing in choir. Always. Sing. Yes. Yeah. Do, you, do you sing as Did well, Did you? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh. I'm not singing in choir. Can, can you sing, Blake? I cannot sing. No. Everyone can uh, sing. No. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. I can't I'm, sing. I can't sing well. Okay. Do you? Because I was going to say, I'm going to th- sort of throw to you, and you can either tell a joke, tell a story, or sing a song. But if we could do a hymn. That'd be that good. Let's be try to do some old better. Catholic stuff. What do yeah. we know? Um, I mean, there will be some cultural differences. I found Catholic Catholic mm-hmm. songs sound different, you know, north and south. But let's try to think of one. What's a good one? Are there different commandments? I mean, I don't know why we're talking about religion. Or <laughs> someone told me that Catholics have this 11 commandments or something, and there's only... What? what? That's not true, right? No. That's just like yeah. some sort of anti-Catholic bullshit. I think, talking about the, yeah. I think you were talking about the Beatitudes, and there's seven of those. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seven Beatitudes. Man, yeah. I forget that? all that stuff. I had I've to... That, that, that was like that. a what test to yeah, memorize it in test. seventh grade. I couldn't, I yeah. couldn't say what an seven? ounce of what it. What is even one Beatitude? Yo, Google. Google, can I get the Beatitudes, please? Tell us what it is. The what attitudes? The Beatitudes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I did Google what the 11th commandment is. Okay, what is it's that? It's from Ronald Reagan. Oh, no. <laughs> Man. Couldn't be any better. I'm just going to take these off and what, what was the 11th commandment, according to Reagan? That's he when had, I leave. Well, yeah, I mean, be kind. He had Alzheimer's. Yeah. Oh, I, my he God. might have thought there were 11 commandments for some reason. Oh, my gosh. I feel like this is... He a, had a higher power, yeah, that's for sure. this is the opposite sure. of a commandment for me like I'm gonna not do this but thou okay. shalt not speak ill of any fellow Republican wow, wow. what the fuck man? that's a that's a good <laughs> that's a good commandment what the fuck kind of thing to say well, you gotta, you gotta keep the team to together, together so it doesn't matter it doesn't <laughs> that's, that's sort of old fashioned sort of leadership though isn't it you know you, you don't break rank you don't it's like parenting Oh yeah, you don't too. argue with each other. Well, you know what's funny about kid. that is, like, I think the commandment that 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 is derived from is you don't speak ill of uh, your neighbor, of your neighbor, and yeah, like that's just all about like ego death, you know. And <laughs> Republicans are not <laughs> not going for that, I don't think. Well, that is an actual commandment, though, isn't it? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's ox or something. Yes. yes. Is that the same thing? No. Yes. Yes. That's not the same Some thing kind of as libel. Well, the other commandment, too, is uh, is like uh, you won't, 
I think maybe they're trying to say you won't speak ill of God, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, now we're yeah. doing some commandment stuff, too. Oh, Where are the Beatitudes at? <laughs> what are the Beatitudes? Christ has died. Christ is risen. <laughs> Christ. You know that. We'll come again. There we go. Yeah. Okay, there that's it fine. is. There it is. Yeah, we got eight. I'm, is eight eight beatitudes. I thought it was hit seven. me, hit me with the is beatitudes. Eight? Maybe <laughs> Reagan added one. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did. Apparently, let me guess. What is the what's the first? Give me the first. Here? And then the we'll see if we can now spur us uh, on remembering the others. Okay, so there's eight in Matthew, and then four in Luke. Okay. Okay. I remembered it being more of like a speech, not even numbered. But anyway, go for it. Let me hear. Well, let he, me hear one. There's the bar for a minute to get a beer. We came back and we're talking about the beatitudes. Have we're got, still in it. <laughs> yeah. We are balls deep well, what, in the beatitudes really? right now. What are the beatitudes? Even too much theology today. Uh, I know. We really whoa, got hung up whoa, on. We really whoa. got hung up on religion today. <laughs> and you're any, trying to convince me to convert right? to Judaism? <laughs> you asked. You asked. Okay. That's I am fair. trying to get you to convert. <laughs> Did you grow up with religion? Yeah, yeah. Grant's yes. a member very, of the tribe. I'm very religious. Though. Very religious. That's why I bring this up. Oh, nice. Grant, I, I can, believe in everything. What do you grow up with? I, I grew up in a Jewish family. Oh, nice. But That's why I totally go, I'm totally open to anything. Yeah, you should come to First Grace with me. You would love it. it. I, I think they're all good. They're, you would all love the it. The vibes are so right. It's a okay. very welcoming place. All right. Very, like, every sermon's, like, socially just and, and activated, and it's I mean, it's a very activated so place. You liberal. should come, too. The does kids it, should come. Does that, does that Is that more of a reflection of the church or of New Orleans? Because... I find New Orleans yeah. to be a place that, it's one in the same, that, though, that right? would happen. Right. Yeah. Right, right. You, know, you just, can't separate it, you yeah. know? Or at least the, the, the New, but New I, Orleans. I think, yeah, exactly. But I think, I think Methodists also, like, there's some simple things that are just, like, from this Catholic brain is like, whoa, like, the table is open for mm. Eucharist. They're just like, anyone come, come to up. this table. And in Catholic Church, if you, like, there would be one or two Jewish kids that are Catholic K through 8, and we'd make them go like this mm -hmm. up, and then they can't get the goddamn Eucharist, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't come think on. Right, but yeah. <laughs> I know. Sorry, God. That was bad. That was bad. I'm sorry, God. I love what you, do they, Okay. What do the Catholics think about lesbians? Are you out? Do they kick you out of that? <laughs> out? Yeah. I mean, if you're a lesbian... I would like to use this platform to come out right now as a lesbian. No, I don't mean... Are you, I mean, are you out of the church? <laughs> <laughs> are you kicked out of the church? I mean, I... Yeah, no. As they, soon as you they say are, I'm a lesbian, you're yeah, out of Yeah, it's the bad. It's really you bad. Like, can uh, you go to church as a... I had some friends who worked for the Seattle Archdiocese mm. who couldn't live an out life. Like, they, it was very, they lived a very closeted life because they could have been and some were fired from working for the archdiocese because they were gay. So you can be I fired think? if you work for the archdiocese and you live with your heterosexual partner outside of marriage. Yeah, okay. So that's the reason why I became disenchanted because me and my wife had a child and we didn't get married until seven years later. And I didn't, I couldn't participate in communion for seven years. And so... I was just like, you know what? I'm kind of good. Oh, wow. Right. Because yeah. that Why hurts, you man. You know, like you give so much to yeah. this thing. And then they're just like, no, this very simple, normal thing you want to do is fucked up. And you're like, this, that hurts. I was, quote, unquote, living in sin. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But how do they explain sin. it, though? <laughs> how do they explain it within the Catholic Church that God created everything? Created heaven and earth and all the mm. creatures on the earth and everything. Right. But he doesn't like homosexuals. <laughs> I mean, what, what is their explanation for that? I have no. I, I mean, look, I, I grew up Catholic too, and there really baby. was not much any conversation in my church about God creating all that stuff. Like they blew past that, <laughs> you know. It's more about like a moral order and an establishment. In my opinion, so there's no know. explanation. I thought maybe there'd be an explanation. I'm why sure oh, there's there there some the, explanation. The, the, the explanation is that it's a choice in that. Uh, oh, actually, you know, God, so God, what, you weren't created gay. What, yeah, yeah, God, you God, chose to go God, against God. Yeah, God gives everyone uh, free will, and you have a, you have a, a, an option to choose to follow the word, and you can choose to right. whatever. That, that would I'm be sure right. there's even some more. You know, I'm sure there's some yeah, more yeah. stuff. But more you, did, you didn't no. invite a bunch of super pro Catholic. Hey, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's next stuff. Yeah, next episode's the like pro Catholic homophobia. Okay, maybe. So maybe Sister Franklin uh, will show up at some point and Sister come, Franklin. come and rebuke. I hope she shows up. There's still, still time for her to show up. She, she'll still wake time. up and come down here. 
There's so when you're not at church on Sundays at First Grace on Sunday, yeah. what do you do the other th- six and a half days of the week? What do, I, are you what do I do with my life? So you're the you're the host of the Moth, yeah, I'm the, the local, host of the moth. which is a great the, oh, the storytelling app. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should download. come. Yeah, yeah you should come oh. tell a story. Cool. I like yeah. telling stories. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I freestyle too sometimes. Nice. So y'all could freestyle. Yeah. Now you yes. tell me. Okay. When's your birthday? Are you a Gemini? Oh, no, I'm a Leo. Ah, oh, damn. What date? Damn. Oh, Just August like Barack 17th. Obama over August here. 17th. August 17th. And Most of the presidents birthday? have been Leos. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Barack Obama, for yeah. sure. Shout out, to, shout out to Barack. Yes, yeah. always. Malia Obama. I work at K Cafe. Shout out K Cafe over by Door Furniture, sponsor hey. of the... Uh, so you work <laughs> at K Cafe? I work at K Cafe. Shout out to Steve and Becky and Robin. How's all that these guy, people. Steve Himmelfarb? He's a Man, How's dude, he that's doing? My, that's I haven't my, seen him. That's my man. Yeah, you should come say what's up. He's a, got a really divine story about divination and chocolate cake. Yeah, totally. That is a crazy was was Malia a, Obama there? Yes, Malia, yeah. Malia Obama what? was there two weeks ago, and it was fucking amazing. Wait, no, for real? Malia Obama, if you were watching this, I wanted to talk to you so bad. But in New Orleans, we have this culture where, like, you don't talk to celebrities, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. This is, like, to very, key, very, very cool. Key. And right. Steve is so like that, you know? Like, he's very just like, yeah, your neighborhood dude, you know? So, like, we are, no one's going to go up to her. I, and other celebrities have come in, but with her, I'm like, I wanted to ask so what bad to get there a selfie. Who was she with? So her mom was in town a couple weeks ago oh, for the, the librarian's con- mm, convention. Yeah, right. And mm. so she was here, and she was with, like, three white dudes who just looked kind of... Not as interesting as as me to regular, sit and regular. have a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to be sitting there with Malia Obama, and it was amazing because um, she was in there the whole time, and everyone in the cafe, the the customers and everything, everyone's just like, "Yeah, this is really normal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting coffee now. <laughs> this is my casual breakfast, you know." But the energy was just so palpable. intense, yeah. palpable. Well, so, so real she rap- is she somebody famous as daughter? But in herself, mm, she's, what she's is famous what is in her own right. She's she a nineteen-year-old Harvard student she's right a now. Student. Yeah. Do we know anything about so it? Fun, so I do. So fun fact: my cousin took her to prom. Oh, uh, whoa! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now so, that's a good one. Real rap. So damn, so, dude. So my cousin, what? So my cousin went to Sidwell and Friends, which is a private school in uh, D.C., which is where right. both of the uh, both Sasha and Malia went. Oh and my god! He was a senior. She was a sophomore. Took her to, took her to prom. Went to the White House. Like real. Oh, like, went wow. to the White House. White House to my pick god! Up to, to pick prom. up your prom yeah. date oh and do so, the whole so, corsage yeah. and so shit. So my cousin. So my older cousin. Who and then I'm trying not to use names because they. Uh, oh, you can use. They're names. famous too. Well, not famous. They are prominent uh, Washington. Well, we're not going to know who they are. I mean, um, if they damn, this so, listen. So they go okay. to so Jessica Franklin missed out. Uh, yeah, today. Believe it. <laughs> so they go. So they go to the restaurant where they knew that uh, across the street from where they knew where Malia and my cousin were going, and when my my cousin was a grown man, um, was taught six five, played basketball at Dartmouth. Uh, he <laughs> takes out he takes out his takes out his phone as they're getting out the car to to photograph you know his son in right. a, in a date walk into the restaurant a dude at the table next to him in the restaurant stood up and took his phone it was like wow. I'm a member of the Secret Service come with me who are wow. you <laughs> and so they maybe were in the restaurant across the street maybe you can um, answer oh but, maybe you can because we were all I mean we were buzzing for weeks after this well maybe you know? those three white guys were secret service we couldn't quite <laughs> tell though like they kind of seemed like our friends like we we couldn't quite tell but then there was this one guy sitting off to the side and we were like maybe that's secret service yeah. but but I, I I meant to look it up like does she have secret service for the rest of her life or is it her choice or what C-Rock will tell you that. actually I, I think motherfucking Bush, <laughs> L- Little Bush. I think Little Bush made it a rule where uh, you don't have to have Secret Service for the, re- or it's your choice or something to have this is Secret Service. Little Bush, the president. The president, yeah, well, not the Jewish lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's good too. Motherfucking little bush is Jewish. <laughs> but here's my conspiracy theory about that: is little bush is like, yeah, every every president after me is going to be a black man, so you don't have to have secret service after after this. <laughs> yeah. You know, that I'm, was his like well, last jab. Hot. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that next one can change it though, can't they? I I. I, I I'm sure. I, let's Trump. not even go there. Obama. Let's go back to Catholicism. <laughs> Catholicism is less divisive than yeah, yeah. Yes, politics. Certainly. But here's the hilarious thing about Malia Obama being in there, because we're all... The, How tall is she? The, very tall. She's fairly tall. Amazing. Yeah. Her hair was braided and, is she and beautiful still in and touch long. with your... 
Yeah, so prom dates are prom forever. So yeah, dude. My, like, so <laughs> so yeah, my cousin he uh, he rode at Dartmouth. You know, captain of the team. Wow. You know, so he's we're a, really getting hooked up. I yeah, love this guy. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, damn. Like, yeah, and that, so, so they're like, yeah, he he's a solid guy. Well, he's a solid Sounds guy, like man. it, man. Yeah. Barack he, approved. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he's not dating Malia. Really, uh, no, he's not. That was no, just no, a sort of a so one No, I think that was a, a thing with high a person school. who went to high school with him. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. When Malia cool. left Cake Cafe, everyone just started applauding oh, wow. as uh-huh. soon as she left. But why would they do it after she left? Because we had to play it yeah, cool. Right. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? So then the tension was broken, and there was this one guy by the by the door, and he just looks up at someone at the counter, and we were like, yeah. yeah, and he was like, I knew it. And I was like, yeah. That's cool. Okay, so we just started screaming. Who else has been into Cake Cafe? Elijah Wood came in five days in Elijah, a row who's that? Uh, last week. The little Hobbit, little Hobbit guy. Excuse me. How tall Hobbit. Was he? Hobbit. The Hobbit. The little Hobbit guy. <laughs> or Frodo, baby. Frodo. Frodo. Lord of you the Rings. What? You haven't even seen I Lord never of seen that Lord shit either. Rings. I never uh, seen it either. I know him from I'm North, a, I'm not the a movie sci-fi North. Guy. When we were children, that movie came out. How else would you know Elijah Wood? He's little and has beautiful blue eyes. The, the Disney, the stuff. Disney Huckleberry have, Finn movie. Mm, someone Zero. pull up a picture. <laughs> you gotta oh, yeah, know Elijah Wood. Movie. He's in a movie called The War. Here's the thing about Elijah Wood. He got. Here this is. little oh, man. Yeah. He's a, he's he's a hobbit? Man. I've never seen him before. Oh, yeah. I love you for oh, that, yeah. dude. Yeah, okay. I love you for that. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea you are an enlightened man if you don't know who Elijah Wood is. You're so busy pursuing other things. You yeah, don't know who I, Elijah Wood is. I'm, I'm uh, very deep in, in, into like black art, black culture. All I right. Let's talk about no, that. He's neither. He's neither. He's neither black art or black culture. What movies do you like? I mean, lots. Let's um, talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what did you think of Black Panther? What I think, of, I thought it was great. I think that it was an opportunity. Did I think you really think it was great. I think that my kids, I think that my kids great. will have an opportunity to see themselves reflected as superhero, as heroes, and as you know, pow- powerful, omni- like omnipotent people. What about Blade? Blade. Yeah, Wesley Snipes. I He's a superhero. A, sure. Sure, that, that's, that's a fact. Spawn. Um, <laughs> Blade was more like overtly violent, though. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? This, this like was Black more, Panther sick. was more. <laughs> yeah, it, it was more. Part, it showed like the the, 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 the variety of the strength, uh, like of black strength people, and, yeah. and ingenuity and the, right. the, the, the brilliance. Uh, and so, yeah, I thought that that was right. was strong. Thumbs up. So Thumb, thumbs up for okay. for Wakanda. Salute. Wakanda. No, like, it's a great story. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, for sure. Whoever came up with it, who did come up? With Ryan Coogler. The who director, yeah, he's the director. Who also, no, did. Who wrote, who Stan wrote Lee, Lee, Stan Lee, Stan and Jack Lee Kirby came up with right. oh, Black Panther. Two white guys. No, but but Ryan Coogler oh. was the director of the movie. Who right. also directed Fruitvale Station. Right. Um, so he's good. Uh, Creed. Creed. He directed Creed as well. So good. Um, knows a lot about movies. I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Anyway, he's like super dope, okay. and he's young. He's like, hell, I'm 33. He's like. He might be younger than me. He might be like 31 or something. Yeah, yeah he is. He's yeah. like he is super young. young. So yeah. are you involved in black culture or black art? 32. Mm. Do you do anything? Do you create stuff? Do I create? No. Are you writing anything? No, nah, my outlet for creativity is mostly, like I said, uh, playing around with my boys. Like These are rap. your actual boys? Uh, my, my, yeah, my children. Your sons. Yeah, my children. And then also hanging out with my friends. But we don't do anything formally, nah. So you have We're, three boys? Three sons. Yeah. Nice. Wow, wait, how old are they? Uh, eight, five, and 18 months. Oh, really? That's yeah. That's a good range. Have you quit now, or are you sticking with the Catholic system? <laughs> you keep having Have it. three girls I, now. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. Like, with the, the, yeah, I think that we're, we're going to pause, reevaluate. My wife's in medical school, so that's another oh, impediment. Oh, my God, that's serious. To, uh, Damn, you to, come from so a you're gonna successful You're going to have a doctor there. in the family and everything. Yeah, we have a, a, a doctor in the family, so they get to see their mom grind. Yeah. And so, what um, kind of a doctor does she want awesome. to be when she's done? Uh, I'm not sure. She does. She. I mean, she's still in. She's doing rotations right now. So, not exactly sure. I think that she's one of those folks who's in it for like impacting, trying to find a, a career that will help her uh, bridge or combine merge her passion for medicine right. and then her passion for you know making a difference in the lives of, of people. Are you from here? Born and raised in yeah. Punta Train Park. And she is right. too. No, she's not. She's where's uh, she from? She's she she grew up in. In Florida and Arizona. Nice. Yeah. That's quite Punch a, a train yeah. park. Punch Damn. a train park. Yeah. Nice. It's the uh, it's pilot. It's a pilot community in yeah. east of Gentilly. Where are you living now? 
Pontchartrain Park. I used to. Nice. Yeah. Pontchartrain Park. Wow. Yeah. I just took Are my you? mom to the uh, the Art Deco little restaurant. What's it called? The airport out there that has oh, a restaurant in yeah, it. The Steve pun- told me to go out there, actually. Yeah, my boss, he loves um, it out there. What's crap. that called? I'm looking at it right now. I know. That's, that's your neighborhood. I've been to there so many yeah, times. Yeah, There's an yeah, airport yeah. in uh, Messina's. Park. Messina's at the airport is the yes, name of it. Yes, there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. What airport are we talking about? Lakefront. The Lakefront, the Lakefront, Lakefront airport. airport. This is where, where the private jets and all this stuff okay. arrive. Yeah. They should use that more for like any sort of like 1920s filming. I know it's, it's totally madman. It's crazy. So that's yeah. The actual tax credits that they got, I think, were for that reason. I oh, think really? It was the film um, was to restore it to its original, whatever. But it was to form it was WPA to film. glory for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was to film some movie. Um, was Do we know each other? I feel like. Do you know Eritrea? Excuse me. Do you know Eritrea Pitts? No, no, you I don't. don't. No, Do you I'm, know our trap hits? Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Who is that? That's my comedy partner and good friend. So I feel like we met before, and she lives out there, so possibly. I was just wondering. Yeah. So you're in a comedy duo called Riot and Pitts. Yeah, Pitts and Riot, Pitts she would like me to say. Riot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I looked that up on the internet, and I couldn't even find a reference. Not a peep. What's up? Not a it? peep. Why, Why is profile? that? It, it low profile, yeah. I'm, Why? I'm really quiet. I'm really quiet. Are you I'm staying here. off the internet for some No, that's, that's my, uh, that's my, my uh, uh, sketch partner and and. And, uh, improv partner, so we do stuff more uh, in in the human flesh. We we don't have too much of a uh, online presence. So how would how do you work? Does someone book you? Sure, you want to book me? Well, yeah, how about I got I find booked, you. I, I got booked one. right here. <laughs> Where do you work? Though? Where do I see you? Where would I go see? We you? travel together and do and do festivals and stuff like that, and uh, and we do different events. We kind of we were grinding really hard about. Five years ago, four years ago, I was with a group called Feathers also, and then and then we disbanded, and then Eritrea and I kept working together. So this is part of like a, one of these comedy theaters in town. Yeah, yeah. So we just we get booked, uh, but no, we're we're our own thing. We're just okay. like the two of us. We're not associated with one or other of these. Yeah. She's just, so you, funny. I worked with her on set last summer Tom's on a, a film, and she made me. I learned, I ruined three takes as the sound guy because she was making me laugh Air so Tria hard. Pitts I could is, not is keep it together. The funniest human being. She's like a in slow the world. burn yeah. of just like like. And she's part of Black Girl Giggles. I want to give a huge. That's who you okay. need to get on this show. We is need Black to get Girl Giggles Air on the show? Definitely. Hey, well, anyway, listen. What I was Definitely. getting at. Black Girl Giggles. I'm looking for. Go look at. But I'm telling the camera right now. Black. Girl Before, giggles. I was gonna say instead yeah. of having, oh, you mean doing, like like the, like the like the country? Yeah, her 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 uh, mom is from Eritrea, so no, she's no named way. Eritrea. Yeah, I have, and uh, they just had some good things going on this week. Nat, oh yeah, big up to Eritrea and yeah, Ethiopia. Shout out to, to yes. Ethiopia and Eritrea. Like, yes. I'm a big. A Are pro- you Eritrean? No, no, I get. I've gotten that a bunch, but yeah. I have a proclivity for uh, East African culture. Let's yes, just, I'll just stop there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened to that? <laughs> what happened to that Eritrean group of people that were here that had their restaurant? There was an Eritrean restaurant on Earhart. Oh, Earhart! Remember that years ago? What? Really? That was a long time ago now. No, I but save that question for Eritrea. I bet okay. she'll know. All right. Well, so she'll she know. named herself after country. That's like. Well, she didn't name herself. Her. Wait, no, that's her actual name. That's her name. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That her mom herself. and dad named her that. Oh, no, okay. no, that's her name. She's that's super a, dope. That's yeah. The yeah. Super dope. Of the Pitts family. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but she goes by it. Yeah, but she has a funny story about that. I'll I'll save that for when she's on the show. Shout out to the Pitts family. Yes, yes, yes. So where can we see you? So Before. I'll be performing on Friday night. I'm doing a, a greetings from Queer Mountain at, at the Always Theater at 7.30 on Friday night. I'll be doing a, a little stand-up set then. Greetings from Queer Mountain. Mountain. Greetings like from Queer it Mountain. It's good. Is this a sort of underground comedy scene that you have to be in on the nose? I mean, that's the thing about comedy. We aren't trying to keep it underground, but, you know, people <laughs> people want to come out to the shows to a, a varying degree of success. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, what are your thoughts on Amy Schumer? Man, thank you. Thank you for this platform. Hey, poor Amy Schumer. I have a lot of love and compassion for her, but I'm just like, damn, what the fuck happened, dude? <laughs> what did happen? Why is there even an issue about Amy Schumer? What did she do? Oh, my God. I mean, she just, I mean, all love to all pew. It's hard to answer questions like that because it's like I really do believe in the oneness and connectivity of all people. Gotcha. So she's on her path and she's doing her thing, but it's like, youch, dude. Yeah. 
What she's did, fucked up. You, you know what I mean? Was, what did she do? She's Ooh. fucked up. She just like had an okay stand up thing going. She's touring really hard, touring really hard. But then just like she took a left turn and she's just like she's not staying growing on herself, you know, mm. or trying to be an ally for black people or women or. Well, did she say something embarrassing or bad? Or I can't anything. quote it exactly, yeah, but it's there's just there's the whole vibe, you know? Yeah, there's just been a number of instance, instances in which. She has uh, shown a lack of awareness um, or just an inability to grasp, like, nuances around race um, and around allyship in a way that you would have expected her to based on her earlier stuff. Exactly. Is that a fair way? Yes, that's yeah. exactly what I'm yeah. saying, you well, know, and it's not expect- one thing. And then she came out with, I, I have a movie pass, so I see too many damn movies. Shout out to movie Little plug for movie pass right there. <laughs> yeah. So I unfortunately saw her movie, I Am Pretty, <laughs> uh, and I walked out of it halfway through. No way. Because I Am Pretty is like a more problematic Shallow How. I don't know if y'all ever saw Shallow How, but it's literally the exact same plot line as Shallow How. Uh, but it's just like feminine body shaming. So what happened to Amy Schumer? Because she was the coolest. She was the, the hip comedian. She was the Sarah sure, Silverman yeah, of she, comedy. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that because Sarah Sil- Silverman stays on her shit. And, yeah, and Sarah, 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 Sarah Silverman is the Sarah, Sarah Silverman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Silverman is a, <laughs> right, right, right. Sarah Silverman is a le- legitimate genius, though. And sure, Amy yeah, Schumer yeah. is an entertainer. Who was trying? I mean, to be. she was she but was on her way was to like still myself. to still. Gra- I I loved Amy Schumer's early early stand up, and she was really doing some stuff. And then she just kind of checked out of of wanting to be kind of on the court of. of yeah. I couldn't have said it better than you did of like staying uh, up on. You know, as a white person, you have to continually remind yourself that we were. Uh, we were we are a product of white supremacy and abuse right. and trauma and right. ownership of other people and that's the only reason that i i am born like i i have this like uh you know like uh i'm a fucking i was born into white feminism you know like and which was built on the backs of of black women teaching and working by the time women were to, white women were like i want to i want the right to work black women had already had been, been cleaning working. up fucking <laughs> everything they had raised you forever yeah, exactly literally had raised them exactly yeah. you know and and amy schumer just kind of checked out of that i feel like checked out of that conversation and it hurts you know it's yeah. like a white as a white woman stand up where i'm like damn dude like you got to keep working like that's the art form you know what How i did mean did she get herself in that conversation in the first place why would anyone care what amy schumer thinks about it cuz she was grind she was grinding she's, on the stand up circuit and, and well, was, she had a huge platform and she was friends with chris rock and shit like yeah so you just assume you that, know like, yeah yeah and once you get a platform i think that you know right or wrong people expect you to to display uh, well, I think we expect people in Hollywood who are entertainers to be liberal and in- intelligent. I don't expect but, I don't, them I don't to, them to be liberal. liberal. I expect don't them, you? It's my man. <laughs> no, no, I don't expect them to be liberal. I expect them to be... I expect them to use their platform wisely. So one of the people yes. who's even in my LinkedIn profile is that I'm an apologist for LeBron James, Prince, and Kanye. And I've been like reevaluating the last entrant on that list for some time now because oh. I think that the platform that you're given... Uh, requires you to use it and wield the power that you have in a responsible manner and to the extent that Amy Schumer or Kanye or whomever else isn't doing that no one is above reproach and we should hold them to account for not using their platform responsibly. What about the what about their role as entertainers and that's what they do like do you I mean, if someone was a doctor. Well, then if we're gonna if we're gonna talk it that way, then her show just started tanking also, and it just wasn't funny. So if we're gonna the Netflix if show, if, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Uh, her actual her stand-up. sketch show, her right. sketch show. Okay. She had a sketch show. I think it was called. I don't even want to plug her shit. It was insane. <laughs> <No. laughs> but she had a sketch show, and it and it just it started. Well, it wasn't well, funny to me because well, it wasn't. Well, that's it, different. If it's not funny, it's, it's not funny. Well, I'm just speaking to your point right. where okay, so let's evaluate whole, them by entertainers. Then at the same time as her not working on her white allyship, she also was like tanking so, as a performer. So here's, here's, here's the problem. So, so let, let me push. I push back on the idea that you can some way extricate. Uh, their art from the culture 
you can't do that in, in, in a couple of areas, one of which is music, the other, I'd argue, is, is comedy, because those two are a reflection of culture, right? So music is an art form that's literally just a reflection of, like, the, the, the things that we are experiencing individually or collectively as a people. Um, and, and it's just expressed in a musical form with lyrics and with, like, auditory, with, with sounds. And comedy is our embellishment of real feelings, real emotions, real thoughts, real experiences um, done so in a way to, to entertain, but it's just embellishments, right? Um, and because that's the case, I don't think that you can separate, or in any way, I don't think you can separate cleanly person's art from their like uh, the way in which they express ideas about the culture or things that are happening because they're almost one and the same so and i would say that you know and then you're saying oh what if it's a i would say that's true of a doctor too i've been to doctors where uh where i could t- you know from different things they've told me that their core values were different from mine and it was a negative experience for me mm-hmm. You know but what I mean? Like you gonna, can't separate that from have, a doctor or a teacher if you have a or heart any con- other if you job have a heart either. Condition and you needed to have someone take care of your heart. Would you really care if the guy or the woman had a political or, or religious the woman be- or a religious belief women that can was, be doctor or a religious belief that was different to you as if they're going to save your life? Uh, religious belief, I, 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 I could probably care less about. Um, but is it going to be a litmus test? I, I, I think, for a doctor, probably not. No, no, no. I think that I think that right now, political belief in has is becoming conflated or intertwined with moral belief. And if I thought that the person had a moral, like like actual different morals than I did, then yeah, it would raise a flag, and I would probably go with the provider that aligned but more with my morals. Would you even morals. have that conversation? We wouldn't have that conversation because you that, wouldn't that, know you that would that go there because you're dying of a heart. Condition. But there's isn't a platform that they're for. But but yeah. when it's an entertainer, we suddenly have to judge people by by some sort of moral character when all they're doing is the same job that everyone else is doing except for some reason we I mean I'm not saying it's right or wrong but we do we do bring a higher level of judgment I'm not well, judging people job. but I well, am urging and, and wor- trying to work with other people to reimagine a world where we're all doing better to help one another right you know? yeah I think everybody thinks that's happening yeah but uh, don't, I, they, don't we all think we're all on some sort of Mm. Up with slope, no, and we're all getting better. So I, I, I would just, everybody thinks that, even though it's obviously. I, I, I would just I would just add in that that there is why there are a large number of, of studies that, that report bias in the medical profession. There's, there's been a long history right. of testing and, and racism, like just ex, yes. explicit subjugation right. of black people within in the medical field, whether it's like testing vaccines or given you know black force diseases in the Tuskegee Tuskegee experiment. Um, black people are, are are less likely to get pain medicine. I mean, there's just I mean, there's so many things. So I'm saying that to say um, that we shouldn't hold it, uh, that white supremacy has permeated all aspects of society, and that though we don't es- expect the doctor to speak eloquently or cogently about you know Black Lives Matter, we do expect though that the doctor can uh, realize the biases that exist in the medical profession and that they are working to eliminate that within the systems within which they operate. And if I find out that a doctor didn't espouse beliefs that were dedicated to uh, equality of treatment and, and equity of treatment, then I wouldn't go to him. So, say, or her. So saying that to say, to answer your question, no, we don't expect them to have like the platform to talk about the, their beliefs like Kanye or Amy Schumer, but we do act to, ask them to do in their role, which is practicing medicine, um, to espouse the beliefs, um, the morals that, that, that well, I have. You would hope everybody would have those beliefs. You would totally. hope that nobody is... is yeah. Thinking ill of anybody that's else. That's what I'm no saying. I don't that. hold entertainers to a higher thing. I, yeah, I, I push everyone to, everyone. to have right. that. Yeah, right. for sure. No, oh. it's over. It's, it's over. time to go. Oh I my loved God. it. Give me another <laughs> Thomas hour. Is Thomas is gone. <laughs> Look at that. we got to get out of here. That's crazy. I'm sorry. I didn't realize and we didn't get to your song. No. <laughs> we did Crisis Rescue. I, I wanted you to Christ tell us a again. joke or a story. <laughs> I was going to throw to you for a story or a joke instead of a song today. We got I mean, I think we both told a couple of stories in here, right? We told plenty of stories. I guess we, we did actually get one line of a hymn. We did? That happened. We never did find out what the Beatitudes are. We sure did. I know. We're supposed to be a readout of the Beatitudes. Huh? We still 12? don't know what My that is. My poor seventh grade teacher. Upset. I'm sorry, Mr. Leonard. <laughs> I'm sorry. And all we can say is uh, <laughs> s- sorry no. to Jessica Franklin. No, shout out to Jessica Franklin. 
Shout out Jessica I'm sorry, Franklin. She's Sister Franklin. Franklin. Hopefully she'll come back. Shout out hey, to Black so listen, people so my dismantling white like supremacy. Riot Mueller has yep. been here. For real, for real. And, and Blake Stanfield. If you're like wondering who these people are, it's Riot Mueller, M-U-E-L-L-E-R. Yeah, can, Riot loves you I would on love Instagram. To, follow I would, me, Riot, Riot loves okay, you. Okay, now we finally figured out where to find you. Riot <laughs> loves you. Riot loves you, Riot it's true. Riot loves you on it's Instagram. True. Okay, and, and Blake, we can find you online. Easily. Find me online. Any Trip relation lines. to Bob? Mueller? Yeah. No, I wish. Damn. That could have been our connection right yeah, there. Could have made that happen. That's my cousin. <laughs> who who is he, da- he dated Sasha. Uh, 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 <laughs> that was pretty good. Hey, listen. <laughs> what have I? What have I screwed up here? Man, I've got, we to, don't go, know. I've got to go back to the door furniture situation. Do we get food at the end of this? Yes. Really? Mm-hmm. They didn't bring you a menu over here. What? <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> hey, listen. You remember the remember door I'll furniture? Keep talking all night. For the yeah. last eighty years, In door Marini, furniture baby. has been serving retail customers throughout the Greater New Orleans area from its home base on Elysian Fields Woo. in the Marini, as well as the finest quality furniture from brands like Stickley, Century, and Flex Steel. Doors designers can customize pieces for your home from slip cover sofas to dining room tables. So if you're on the North Shore, door recently opened a second location in Covington. Door furniture wow. is as New Orleans as it gets, by the way, wow. in case you're wondering about it. Also, thank you to Strategic Resumes. If you want to sharpen up your resume, your LinkedIn profile, or your other job search skills, get in touch with Grant Cooper at Strategic Resumes. And thank you, too, to Travel Central and Metairie. If you'd like to get away, you can start your travel search by going to Travel Central and Metairie. It's kind of like getting on kayak. Hmm? It is. Or Expedia, but someone but you else go does somewhere. it. Someone yeah. else does it for you, and it's free. <laughs> so I'm not sure how we all moved away from having a travel agent, but somehow we gave that up. And now we Internet.com all that is time. exactly how we yeah. moved away from that. And yet, these people at Travel Central, you just call them up and tell them where you want to go, and they'll book it for you. And you don't have to do a fucking thing. Man, shout out to Al Gore for starting the internet. Exactly. Yeah. Good old Al. Mic drop on that one. Thanks for joining us. Our producer of our show <laughs> is Graham DePonte. Our associate too. producer is Alison Moon. Christian Unreal is our music director who didn't direct any music today whatsoever. And what about my Pyle hymn? Is our associate music director who didn't either. Thomas Walsh is our technical director. That's my boy. Two, two years Ooh. today. Asher Griffith is our Facebook live feed director who put this whole show on Facebook. And Andrew Searock is our fact checker and social media connector. Our theme music is currently being played by and was written by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show and you can sit upright for about an hour, drop us a line. <laughs> our address is on our website. It's neworms.com where you can also find many other hours of happy hour that we made previously as well as some other shows that we make here. Out to lunch with Peter Raschuti live from Commander's Palace. Louisiana Eats with Pompey Tucker and our award-winning podcast about death called Death the Podcast. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and it's batonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and a bunch of other time-sucking social media as well. And all of it, we're called It's New Orleans. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and on our Facebook page. These photos are taken today by Alison Moon. You can find more photos and info about Alison at alisonemoon.com. If you listen to this on your favorite podcast app, thanks for subscribing to us. Take a moment if you've got one to rate and review us. That helps other people find us. Our show is recorded live today at Wayfair on Ferret Street in Uptown New Orleans. Happy Hours of Production of Iano Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. On behalf of Andrew Duhon, who's also not here today, but he's around the country somewhere. You can find him at andrewduhon.com. And find his new record called False River on Spotify and everywhere else that you can steal music from. Check that out. On behalf of Andrew, everyone else around the table here at Wayfair and back at our office at iNode Broadcasting, thank you so much for joining us. Did Thomas turn your microphone off? He's got one more plug. Wait, what? we got... Here, right. I want to shout out Jude, Parker, Toussaint, the boys. Love you. See you soon. Okay, that's, that's it. That's right. That's our whole show. Thanks for joining us. I'm Grant Morris. I'll see you back here next week for more Happy Hour. Yo, if we go to 7-Eleven right now, we can be back in time for the game. I don't know, man. I don't want to miss kickoff. Okay, but Gatorade is two for two fifty when I use my 7-Eleven app. Dude, but kickoff. But how are we going to stay on top of our game while watching this game if we're not on that 7-Eleven game? Uh, I don't know. How? Keep up, dude. Two for two fifty Gatorade with my 7-Eleven app. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'm feeling you now. Thank you. 7-Eleven. Be game day ready. Plus tax where applicable. Valid at participating locations.